Welcome to Easy Alim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be starting on the topic energy changes in physical and chemical process. Uh, and today we are going to be looking at what exothermic and endothermic processes are. And then we are going to also show in terms of um, uh, energy level diagrams as well. So most uh, Chemical and physical processes are usually accompanied by energy changes, which usually occur in the form of heat, and it's usually measured in joules and kilojoules. So you notice in our calculations, we are going to be having units of joules and kilojoules. So it is important for us to remember the conversion of joules to kilojoules because you will be working with both of them. So 1000 joules makes one kilojoule. So if you want to convert joules to kilojoules, you divide by 1000. If you want to convert kilojoules to joules, you divide by 1000. So you notice us using this um conversion and you can note down this conversion it's going to help us in our calculation later on so the heat results from the motion of atoms and molecules and with that we introduce a concept called specific heat capacity uh, it's the number of joules required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree kelvin so the specific heat capacity for example of water which we are going to be using as the standard is 4.18 joules you can see the joules per one gram per one degree kelvin so you notice our our temperatures will be in kelvins our our mass can either be in grams or kilograms that tells you that we need to have the conversion of grams to kilograms which is 1000 grams is one kilogram is the same as one kilogram so we will also be using this conversion as we interchange in the specific its capacity uh, commonly so when you look at the formula for calculating specific heat capacity and you'll be representing it as heat, which can be in joules or kilojoules, is the same as is, is equals to the mass of the solution. You call it mass of the solution or mass of the surrounding, and the surrounding in this case is the surrounding solution. So it's important for us to remember it's the mass of solution because when we come to calculation, we cannot use the mass of the solid. That is a, a common misconception. Then times the specific heat capacity uh specific heat capacity like you notice you've already been given a specific heat capacity of water you always be given as the specific heat capacity in your calculations and then there's a temperature change which will tell us if it's exothermic or an endothermic reaction although we'll come to that in a minute so heat content or enthalpy of a system you hear us talking about enthalpy 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 or heat change heat change or heat content this is the heat content denoted by H. The heat change is denoted by change in heat. So this is the heat content. When you talk about enthalpy, is the heat content in that system. So you notice that change in heat or heat change or enthalpy change is usually equals to energy of product minus reactant. You do this reaction. We will do these calculations later on when we come to board energetics. So heat changes in chemical reaction can either be exothermic or endothermic. So now we look at what are exothermic and endothermic reactions. So endothermic reactions are usually accompanied by a fall in temperature and the energy is absorbed from the surrounding. So you notice these reactions, they usually take up the energy of the surrounding. It can be the beaker, it can be your hands, for example, if you put your hands next to, in the beaker. So they absorb any, any, any energy. So the solutions or the content that are absorbing the energy, at the end of the day, they end up having a higher energy than how they started from, because they have now energy from the environment. So what happens the environment is a force a fall in temperature in the environment and when we measure the temperature we are measuring the temperature of the environment so the enthalpy change is usually positive because you see the reactants are at a certain energy and they absorb it and they they go to a higher energy so if you were to do the subtraction of change of heat that is uh because the the product has have a higher it's larger or higher 
if you subtract it to the reactant, which is lower, it means the value is going to be positive. So all endothermic reactions, we always put positive in front. And we have to remember this, especially when you do the change in temperature. So if we were to look at the energy level diagram, so we have the direction of reactions and the energy. So if you start with the reactant and they absorb energy, you see the product are as an higher energy. So you notice you always put an arrow, especially with this um, uh, line that goes up to show the final product. So another way of representing that, but you notice now we have introduced the activation energy in this case, but we'll discuss what is activation energy later. So you see where the reactants are and where the products are. The reactants are at a lower energy, so, but since they absorbed heat, the product will be at a higher energy. That is the reason why the change is positive. Then uh, examples of such reactions are the reaction of ammonium nitrate in water. If you put ammonium nitrate in water and you um, measure the temperature, you notice that the temperature will drop. That's why when you put your hands next to the beaker, you feel it very cold because it has absorbed any uh, heat around the test tube or the beaker. So that's why it makes it feel cold. So the change in heat will always be positive. So nitrogen plus oxygen forms nitrogen for oxide. That's another example. Right. Exothermic reaction, on the other hand, they cause a rise in temperature and when en energy, uh, they react, the energy is liberated in the surrounding. So unlike for endothermic reactions where energy is being taken from the surrounding, in this case, energy is being released. This reaction is giving off a lot of energy or heat. So you notice there is a rise in temperature and this rise in temperature is on the surrounding so if you measure for example the solution if you started with 20 degrees maybe you end up with 30 degrees or more if you touch the outside of the beaker you feel that the beaker is hot that's because it's giving off a lot of energy and remember the reactants are losing heat into the system so if they are losing heat and they started with a certain energy their energy is going to be lower at the end of the day they can't have the same energy because they are losing so the enthalpy change will always be negative because the values of the products are lower than the values of the reactants. That's why it ends up to be a positive. So if you were to look at the energy level diagram, you notice we are starting with reactants at a very high energy. And then they lose energy into the system and then the product at a, at a very lower energy you can take for example when you eat like when you eat food you bring you 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 absorb it uh you get energy to do stuff so you're energetic so you are at a high energy that is endothermic and then now when you go to maybe to the field and jump and play you are releasing a lot of heat in the process you're using up the energy that you had already absorbed by the time you leave the field you're so exhausted you do not have the same energy so that's what happens initially you had a very high energy now you don't have any energy so the reactants at a high energy the product products are at a lower energy and remember the values are negative because the products are at a lower energy than the reactant so this is another way of presenting you can see how our reactants are and where our products are so we have the the direction of reaction and the energy chemical energy so examples of exothermic reaction is the Haber process we mentioned in nitrogen and its compounds. So when nitrogen and hydrogen reacts, they give off a lot of heat. So another 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 uh, experiment is the dissolving of sodium hydroxide. Actually, when you touch the beaker containing the sodium hydroxide, you know you notice that it's very hot. Uh, this is because um, this causes, uh, that reaction causes a lot of release of heat into the environment. That's the reason why there's an increase in the temperature when you measure the temperature of the solution. So remember the exothermic reaction values are always negative. You notice us putting the negative values as we do the calculations uh, later on. Another concept is the activation energy. This is the energy required to activate the reactants before a reaction takes place. So for a reaction to take place, it needs this 
energy that pushes the reactions to start. What energy is what we refer to as the activation energy. It helps to initiate a reaction. So some, some reactions will not start until they're activated. So the size of the activation energy will differ from one reaction to another. So uh, will be the gap between the energy of the reactant and the energy of the product. So for example, if you look at the exothermic reaction, you can see this exothermic reaction, the reactant is at a higher level and the product is at a lower level. Yes, if you look at the difference between the two, we get the a change in, in terms of the loss of energy, as you can see. But now when you look at where the reactant are, the graph goes up because this is now the activation energy before it actually starts now uh, reacting to form the product. So that is the gap. And then for endothermic reactions, also you can see where the reactants are and where the products are. At the moment you identify where the reactants are and the products are. So the graph goes up because this is the activation energy to cause the formation of the product. So you talk about be both being broken and both being formed later when you come to board energetics. So let's do this one question and uh, end it for that. So study the energy level below and answer the question that follows it and explain whether the reaction presented in the diagram is endothermic or exothermic. So you can see where our reactants are and products. So we start with the reactants at a higher energy and the products at a lower energy, meaning there is loss of energy. So this is going to be exothermic because, let's put it down here, exothermic because the products are at a lower energy than the reactant because they have lost heat or energy heat energy or heat into the system. Then from the diagram, determine the activation energy. So this is the activation. This, this here, this is it. You can see this is the uh, heat change that occurs. But now this uh, distance between here and this highest point is what we refer to activation energy. So that's it. Uh, so in the next lesson, we are going to be looking at different uh, enthalpies and do the calculations. So see you in the next lesson.